Yes, very good afternoon dear students. I am back again to take the next session of this wonderful subject power electronics. Dear students, we have so far discussed about all the devices, they are working and uh, they are uh, uh, set up in certain circuitry and maybe protection. And today's class, I am going to deal with the actual industrial applications of these devices. So, the eighth chapter is what I am going to deal with and I am going to start with my first slide that is I am going to discuss the following topics in this. The topics to be discussed are SMPS, switched mode power supplies, we are going to study about the schematic and the operation. Then we are going to compare SMPS with the linear power supplies and maybe we will talk about the applications of these linear power supplies and SMPS. Then there is one uh, very important circuit uh, known as the SCR battery charger. So, we will be studying about the schematic diagram and its operation. Then we move on to the UPS that is uninterrupted power supplies and uh, we have to define what online and offline UPS system is. And finally, we will study about the block diagram and operation of one type and battery size and voltage how we are going to uh, find out what a battery size and voltage required for a UPS is. So, right away let us start with a switched mode power supply. Switched mode power supply or is also known as switching mode power supply and in short form it is called as SMPS. They also refer to as switcher. It is an electronic power supply that incorporates a switching regulator to convert electrical power efficiently. So, the switching takes place high frequency switching takes place continuously and power is going to be efficiently it is going to be supplied. Like other power supplies and SMPS transfers power from a source definitely mains power what we are having throughout India 230 volts AC 50 hertz to a load whatever load we are going to connect we will uh, decide and the load can be personal computer it can be any load whatever load you want to connect it to you can connect and or on doing that you are going to convert the voltage and current characteristics. The switching power supply is different from a linear power slip. We will be comparing both you will understand it in the later slides. So, unlike a linear power supply, the pass transistor of a switching mode power supply continuously switches between low dissipation, full on and full off states. Please see it will go on and off, on and off it continuously it is going to switch between the two states, digital switching almost it takes place and it spends very little time in the high dissipation transitions thereby minimizing the wasted energy. So, heat dissipation which normally occurs in the linear power supply because the pass transistor in the linear power supply is continuously in its full high dissipation state. It is continuously on there is no switching from on to off state in a linear power supply. So, therefore, the energy is waste of energy is minimized. So, that is why I can tell that ideally a switched mode power supply dissipates no power and voltage regulation is achieved by varying the ratio of on to off time. So, please see I am telling you frequency. So, that is why some for some time it will be on the pass transistor for some time it will be off. So, continuously this happens at very high frequencies. That is why I can say switching power supply, the pass transistor operates in a digital fashion. Just now I told you that it is on for some time and off, on and off. It continuously goes on uh, switching from on to off state in a digital manner. There is no in between state. And when in regulation, the pass transistor is either completely on or completely off. So, there is no in between state. And an external passive component is used for energy storage and transfer. 
okay. passive component energy storage I am telling. So, it can be capacitor or it can be an inductor. So, I can connect one of those. Now, coming over to the block diagram. So, the very simple block diagram is shown here. Definitely SMPS is going to use the uh, mains input that is an AC input voltage of a certain frequency and in India it is 230 volts 50 hertz frequency. So, I am going to convert AC to a DC input rectifier and filter. Filter is necessary because I want to remove unwanted AC components. Then I will convert this AC to a DC. Then again I am going to convert DC to AC. Now, this please see in this stage only I am going to have that amplification also there and I am going to have uh, the frequency also increased. So, accordingly in this inverter circuit I will be having that. Then may be the AC the level voltage level may be less or it may be more for which I require an output transformer not only for uh, increasing or decreasing the voltage, but also for isolation from the load. Okay, if you want to isolate your uh, input circuit from the load circuit, you will be having a transformer. So, the secondary of which will be finally, if I require a DC output, I will be connecting it to an output rectifier and filter. So, once again unwanted uh, AC components are removed. And please see one important feature in this SMPS is the feedback, the chopper controller, which is going to keep the voltage regulated, which is going to give a constant output voltage. So, if it is an AC, I will be having a constant frequency amplitude, if it is a DC, a constant value of output voltage. So, this is the block diagram of the SMPS. So, let us see what each block actually is going to have in the circuit. So, the first one is the input rectifier. So, the if, if the SMPS I already told you has an AC input, then the first stage is to convert the input AC to DC. So, this is rectification. So, I can even have an input DC also, but normally power supplies throughout the in industrial applications they are connected to the AC. So, that is why we require this rectification stage. Then the rectifier produces an unregulated DC voltage that is why we require a filter and it occurs in short pulses around the AC voltage peaks and these pulses have significant high frequency and en en energy which reduces the power factor. So, all these things we have to take into consideration. We may have to see if noise is there then we may have to find out because I am talking about AC I have to find out about power factor also right. So, to correct this all these uh, noise or power factor almost all the newer SMPS make use of this PFC circuit power factor correction circuit to make the input current follow the sinusoidal shape of the AC input voltage correcting the power factor. So, that is a very desirable feature wherein I have I want the input voltage AC to be transferred to the load. So, that there is no noise there is no uh, unwanted unnecessary signals interference. Then power supplies that use active PFC active components means sources it can be ok. Active PFC usually are auto ranging supporting input voltages from the range of 100 volts AC to 250 volts AC. So, there is a wide range okay, with which you can make use of that SMPS and with no input voltage selector switch. So, no problem even if the utility input voltage I normally call it as utility voltage even if the input voltage is going to vary too much also 100 volts if it reduces also there is no problem you can operate these power supplies they are designed for such a low, 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 long range. Then the second stage which I told rect after rectification comes the inverter. This is where I told you amplification and this is where the frequency please see the inverter stage converts DC from the rectifier to AC right by running it through a power oscillator 
whose output transform is very small because frequency of it is very high. So, if frequency is high transformer is going to be large huge linear power supply problem is that, but the SMPS has overcome the disadvantage by having a very high frequency generated by this power oscillator. So, hundreds of kilohertz and the frequency is usually chosen to be above 20 kilohertz because I wanted to make it inaudible to human beings humans. Okay. Switching is going to be at a very high frequency greater than 20 kilohertz which results it to be inaudible to humans and the switching is implemented as a multi stage I told you amplification is also required. So, to achieve high gain MOSFET amplifiers are normally used. So, the inverter stage not only contains an oscillator it also contains an amplifier. Okay. The next that is what transformer if the output is required to be isolated from the input if I want that isolation or maybe if I want to increase the voltage or decrease the voltage for both the purposes I maybe have to use a high frequency transformer please see already the frequency of the uh, waveform AC waveform has been increased. So, that is why the normal transformers are not used high frequency transformers small in size light in weight they are mainly used in the SMPS. So, the uh, isolation is going to be done by the output transformer that is why the block diagram is showing that and finally, if I require a DC output, if I require a DC output normally power supplies in the laboratories will make use of DC. Okay. So, so, if I require the DC then the AC is again given to a rectifier another rectifier stage is there. For output voltage is less greater than 10 volts ordinary silicon diodes are used lower voltages Kotke diodes are used. For even lower output voltages MOSFETs may be used as synchronous rectifiers and finally, the rectified output is smoothed by a filter containing inductors and capacitors. So, you all know you have read about different types of filter circuits it can be pi it can be L whatever okay, those filters and the main important block which distinguishes this uh, SMPS from the linear power supply is this feedback controller circuit. So, this feedback circuit it monitors the output voltage and compares it with a reference voltage and continuously it maintains the output voltage at a constant level that is why it is a regulator I can say and the controller may contain an isolation mechanism also optocouplers may be used to isolate from the DC output. So, switching supplies in computers in TVs in VCRs they are all having these optocouplers to tightly control the output voltage. So, SMPSs are used and they have almost replaced the linear power supplies because of this advantage of maintaining the output voltage constant and because of efficiency being high. So, the next few slides is going to give me the comparison between the SMPS and linear power supplies. So, first thing of course, I have already told you size and weight transformers in the linear power supply they are for 50 hertz. So, that is why transformers and heat sinks are large because of this low frequency. So, large weight is more heavier okay, occupies more space. In SMPS we already have seen that the operating frequency is very high 50 kilohertz to 1 megahertz greater than 20 kilohertz to make it inaudible to humans. So, that is why smaller transformers are sufficient. Then coming to the output voltage linear power supplies of course, depending on the uh, value of the input and value of the rectifier whatever I am going to use I can get any value I can design it to any value, but if it is unregulated problem is output voltage very significant with the load okay, if unregulated. So, normally nowadays regulated linear power supplies only are there. So, but if it is unregulated problem is output voltage varies significantly with the load. Whereas, in SMPS 
any value and voltage variation is very little with load because already it is having a feedback path wherein voltage regulation is continuously happening. Now, huge difference or huge advantage of the SMPS in this is in this region that is efficiency because excess power is dissipated as heat in a linear power supply. So, efficiency may be at the most 50 to 60 percent you can expect. Whereas, in SMPS it is very good 95 percent at least. So, because the output is regulated by the duty cycle control, duty cycle means what time on plus time, on, time off, T on T off. Okay. So, output regulation takes place because of that. So, that is why SMPS is having a huge advantage in this region. Then complexity how complex the circuit is. Definitely linear power supplies are very simple. You hardly need only 2 or 3. See you need diodes for rectification, you need a transformer for isolation and you at the most you may need a capacitor for filtering. So, very simple circuit it is having, but SMPS is becomes more and more complex, but it gives us more and more uh, advantages also. So, more complex circuit it has IC controller, it has several power transistors, diodes, you have uh, high frequency transformers, you have inductors and capacitors for filtering. So, the complexity of the SMPS is more, more electronics involved in it, more devices involved. Then interference, problem over here is in SMPS you have a lot of interference, radio frequency interference in SMPS uh, in linear power supplies it is negligible whereas you are having EMI that is electromagnetic interference and you are having RFI which is radio frequency interference. So, therefore, it requires extra shielding, you require extra electronic circuitry to shield it from that interference to make it work accurately. Then electronic noise at the output, electronic noise at the output, I am telling electronic noise means signal. Okay less noise in linear power supply, there is no much of noise, but it is noisier due to the high frequency switching because the transistor, the pass transistor keeps on switching between on and off states. So, that is why in at high frequencies definitely it is going to be noisier. Then electronic noise at the input, yes you do not have little or no high frequency noise, but there is a presence of high frequency noise. Acoustic that is which is audible whether it is audible to human beings or not, linear power supply it is having an hum, it is faint, but whereas SMPS we are already designing it to be having a frequency greater than 20 kilohertz, so it is mostly inaudible, acoustic noise is not there. Power factor it is another problem, it is low for linear power supply but I can improve it little bit in the SMPS low to medium and I can make it even better also with some more circuitry involved that is why complexity increases. In rush current as soon as I switch on what happens it is large whereas, it is an extremely large surge current and risk of equipment damage linear power supply very sturdy very heavy. So, it is the equipment damage is very low, but SMPS is very light, very small also, lot of electronic uh, circuitry involved. So, it can fail and therefore, troubleshooting becomes difficult. So, it depends on what sort of uh, load you are connecting your uh, device and what sort of SM, uh, what uh, sort of power supply you require for that load. You can choose either SMPS or linear, but of uh, late SMPS has totally uh, uh, eliminated the usage of linear power supplies. So, now let us move on to the applications definitely nowadays laboratories all the laboratories are having uh, linear power supplies only you have already seen you have used it in the labs and in radio equipment definitely you are having those old radios you would have seen very heavy. So, these are the most important applications, but SMPS has totally eliminated. So, that is why SMPS finds more use you are even a small mobile charger circuit previously linear power supplies were used, but now even the smallest of mobile charger circuits have a SMPS, 
personal computers are having definitely. Please see from ranging from smallest to largest space stations are having SMPS involvement, all your automobiles are having Boeing submarines, helicopters, aeroplanes, okay, helicopters, submarines, they are having SMPS only okay, for sub power supply. Then your voltage regulator modules definitely have the SMPS because voltage regulation is the most important application of it. Then your TV, VCRs, okay, all those sensitive they are having motherboard definitely of computer is there. Then LED lighting, okay, they are making use of this SMPS. So, huge variety of applications. So, next we move on to SER battery charger. Schematic diagram is very simple. You have the AC source, input is AC definitely. Then you are having a transformer because you have to step down 230 volts. SCRs are not power SCRs, we are not doing using power devices because battery voltages which we normally have 12, 24 volts. Okay. So, to that level only we are going to have a transformer to step down that voltage to a lower level to operate the SCR. So, SCRs you all know is a unidirectional thyristor. So, that is why AC becomes DC, it is unidirectional, it is going to operate only in one direction and that DC voltage is going to be used to charge a battery which is connected as the load in the circuit. So, a very simple block diagram, you have an input AC, you have a transformer to step down, then you are having an SCR which is um, going to rectify and finally, you are having the battery which is going to uh, be charged. Okay, because it is a battery charger circuit which I am talking about. Now, I am just uh, showing going to show you one circuit, there are many hundreds of circuits, you can use anything along with the SCR, you can use zener diodes, you can use diodes or you can use transistors. So, any one circuit as long as you, you understand what each block is going to do, uh, almost all circuits will be having these blocks by the way. So, it only depends on what is going to be connected to the SC with along with the SCR uh, for uh, whether it is a zener or whether it is a transistor uh, because we have to on and off the SCR according to the charging and discharging. So, that is what may vary. So, one such circuit I am going to show in this diagram. Yeah, it, it does look a bit of uh, complex, but once you understand the working of it, it seems to be very simple. So, I told you it is an input AC 230 volts AC is given, then you are uh, going to switch it on and off of course, you know, then you are having a transformer, a step down transformer to maybe 20 volts it is going to step it down to, then you are using an SCR, along with the SCR you are having a transistor and you are having diodes, please see the direction of the diodes, it is parallel connected in parallel to the SCR anode or all facing the same direction. Same way please see in the transistor you are having two diodes, one connected at the collector and one connected to the base, please see their directions, okay, that is what you have to remember. And then you are having a voltage divider uh, arrangement here in this part and finally, in the load side you are having a battery. The working of the circuit is very simple, very easy also to understand. One thing you should remember is when the transistor is on, the thyristor is off and when the thyristor is on, the transistor is off, that is all, that is the simplest way in the uh, method in which I can put the working of this circuit. So, let us see when the transistor is on, what happens to the secondary voltage, please see it is on means it is almost a short, okay. it is a closed switch correct. So, that is why most of my current goes here, it is, it is no current is going to be passing through the uh, SCR. So, that is why SCR has no gate current also. and it uh, has very less voltage, so you cannot switch the SCR to its on stage. Okay. When does that happen actually? As soon as I connect, let us say I want to find out, I want to charge a battery, I will connect it over here. Okay. Then uh, and let us say there is some voltage across the battery. Okay. Once the battery is having some voltage, please see this voltage divider circuit most of the voltage because transistor is open both are off. Okay. Beginning the 
a CR is uh, the when I connect the battery this is going to source ok. This is going to source some voltage and current. Then please see the transistor is off. So, it is connected across this. So, there is a high voltage drop because of the high voltage drop there is a base current please see the diode which direction. So, it is going to carry the base current once the base current is given the transistor switches on ok. So, that is the operation right. Now, when will the transistor switch off? Now, now a battery whatever voltage is there it is discharging through this transistor continuously it is discharging in this direction ok. Then slowly the battery voltage will become 0 at that point what happens there is no base current to the transistor. When there is no base current where will that uh, go it, it is going to immediately the power from the secondary side will move towards the SCR. So, SCR will be getting most of the voltage positive voltage at the anode negative voltage at the cathode and at the same time there will be a gate current which is passing please see because the transistor is off. So, no current flows here. So, this that secondary current will flow through this diode to the gate. So, a gate current will be supplied immediately the SCR switch is on. Once the SCR switch is on the battery starts charging. So, this is the operation. So, for charging the battery the SCR will rectify the voltage and give it SCR acts as a rectifier only positive half cycle uh, currents will be voltages will be carried given to the gate and the SCR switches on. During negative half the anode becomes negative. So, it does not operate in the negative region ok that is why it is a unidirectional uh, thyristor. So, this is how the working of this battery charger. So, it starts it charges till it reaches its uh, whatever voltage is designed for this battery circuit also you can design for different different voltages whatever level voltage you want you can charge it. So, this is very simple way of putting the working of the battery charger circuit that is what I have explained the AC main voltage is stepped down to 20 volts ok voltage can be uh, designed uh, step down depending on what type of SCR you are using ok depending on the um, uh, what do you say forward break over voltage of the SCR. Then the SCR rectifies this voltage and this rectified voltage is used to charge the battery that I already told you. During charging the battery will not be dead completely. So, when it is having a small uh, voltage this will give a forward bias voltage to the transistor through the diode D2 and resistance and it will get turned on and when the transistor is on the SR will get off that I already told you. Then during discharging the forward bias will be decreased and the transistor turns off and when the transistor turns off automatically the gate of the SCR is given a current and SCR switches on. This triggers the SCR and SCR will again charge the battery. So, this way charging and discharging continuously takes place. So, that is one such circuit of a SCR battery charger. So, students please see this is not the only circuit there are various other combinations I already told you any one if you know the block diagram working it is more than enough. Coming over to the UPS ok uninterrupted power supplies an uninterruptible power supply also called as uninterruptible power source UPS short form or battery flywheel backup all these are the terminologies which you can use normally which we use is UPS. It is an electrical apparatus that provides emergency power to a load when the input power source typically the mains power fails that you already know uninterruptible power supply means when the mains power goes off immediately you will be getting a power from this UPS and that there are the three main types. The first one is called offline or standby UPS, then you are having a line interactive UPS and then you are having an online double conversion UPS ok. These are the major types of UPSs which are available. 
So, let us see what each one means and maybe a simple block uh, diagram of it you will understand it better. So, the offline UPS or standby power systems SPS okay, standby power systems also they are called as. So, what is it going to do? What is it actually? An SPS it monitors the power line continuously and it switches to battery power as soon as it detects a problem, as soon as the mains the power line goes off due to some reason, it will be monitoring it and immediately after it detects a problem, it will switch it to the battery power. The switch to the battery will require several milliseconds, that is the main problem with this. Maybe you have to do it manually or maybe nowadays of course, you are having it automatic also. So, you I have very clearly shown in the block diagram here. Okay. So, normal AC power when it is there, this is the load, okay, some plug point I have shown. So, normal AC power no problem continuously, at the same time please see it is charging the battery also. Once there is a problem in the power line uh, that is over or under voltage or some power loss, immediately the battery yellow colored block diagram will be supplying that power through an inverter to the load. Battery is DC, you all know that battery is DC, so DC has to be converted to AC. So, that is why you require an inverter here. So, battery to the inverter you are giving the power. So, please see this switching only from the power line to the battery backup line, it may takes a few milliseconds. So, that is the disadvantage of standby power systems or offline UPS. The second type is called the line interactive. Okay. These can be used in applications where wide range of voltages, where voltage level is not very critical, where sensitive instruments are not used, equipments are not used. Okay. So, line interactive UPS, it is similar in operation to the standby UPS, but along with the addition of a multi tap variable voltage auto transformer, multi tap and variable please see these terminologies. I can vary it, I can add or I can subtract the powered coils of wire thereby increasing or decreasing the output voltage, magnetic field is increased or decreased accordingly output voltage also is decreased. So, this I can also call it, uh, call it as a buck boost transformer buck means reducing, boosting means increasing. Okay. So, this is one special uh, device which I am going to use in a line interactive UPS. The block diagram is clearly showing this, please see over here, it is not a normal transformer, it is a buck boost transformer. You are having various tappings here, you can increase the number of windings or you can decrease the number of windings depending on which um, the amount of voltage you require. Okay. So, I can tap it and I can get the AC and filter it and I get the AC output. Okay. At the same time, I am having a bidirectional converter here AC to DC or DC to AC which is going to charge the battery bank. So, as and when uh, the power goes off, main power goes off, this battery bank comes into existence and you are converting and you are supplying it. Okay. So, this is the line interactive UPS. See the output voltage is simply the in input voltage or it can increase or decrease okay, to provide a broadly regulated output voltage. And I already told you line interactive units are typically used in less critical applications, wherein the value of the output voltage need not be specific or precise or with equipment that can accept a wider input voltage range, wider input voltage range also it can operate on. So, the I have shown one uh, um, waveform for you to understand actually utility output and UPS output, okay. the output of utility and the output of the UPS, UPS output this is what it looks like you could see it is not a pure sinusoidal waveform there is uh, some um, what you say harmonics also some noise signals available. This is how it looks like and I told you, you can use it 
in a loads which are not bothered about the exact sinusoidal wave shape, it is not uh, bothered about precise waveforms. Finally, coming to the online UPS, the most uh, preferred type, it constantly provides power from its own inverter even when the power line is functioning properly. So, continuously it is keeping the battery also in line and when the power loss occurs the rectifier simply drops out the of the circuit and the batteries keep the power steady and unchanged. Okay. So, continuous on line even when the power mains power is on it is on the battery is on. Okay. So, when power is restored the rectifier resumes carrying most of the load and begins charging the battery. So, let us see what the block diagram is. See that is why I told you please see continuously AC utility input is there, then AC to DC converter is there. I am going to give this DC to an inverter and again it is going to give into a filter and you are getting the output. At the same time please see this is continuously working, this AC charges the battery battery bank is there DC. So, again this also supplies the DC. So, continuous supply is there continuously the converter is there battery bank is also there. Okay. So, this is what the online UPS block diagram actually looks like. Okay. So, this is the block diagram schematic which uh, uh, you may be required to study and learn and then uh, write in the question paper right. So, you require you have please see an AC to DC converter that is rectifier also you can say or you can term it as converter and to do the same thing you are having a battery charger you are having a battery bank. Battery bank is going to provide DC AC to DC converter also provides the DC that is going to be inverted and then finally, after filtering you are getting the output voltage. Okay. A true online UPS pro produces power for your sensitive equipment, please see very sensitive equipment critical may be biomedical uh, uh, instruments will make use of this type of online UPS systems. Okay. So, sensitive equipment from DC power only either from batteries or a rectifier, only DC power input not AC. It is reconverted into perfect AC power for servers, for switches, for routers and other critical systems. This complete isolation prohibits any undesirable utility power anomaly from reaching the equipment. Anomaly means some see that is what I have written here voltage fluctuations, transients, noise, frequency irregularities all of them are called as anomalies they are completely eliminated even those generated by other equipment of the network. So, there is totally no interference also. So, so critical so efficient it is and that is because of its it is used in sensitive equipment. Okay. Wave forms you could clearly make out please see over here you are having a perfect sinusoidal wave no harmonics, but your utility output is having a lot of harmonics. So, that is what you can expect from an online UPS system. Now, we have to move on to the selection and sizing. So, that is about the block diagrams of the types. Now, problem comes with the sizing of the battery. Now, what is the rating of the UPS and what rating uh, UPS you are going to choose for your sort of load and for your sort of application. So, these are the things which you have to understand in this portion. Okay. The following types of batteries are generally selected for use with the UPS. Please see how many different sets of batteries are there. I have written, I have uh, shown this, but you may be knowing only nickel lead acid and nickel cadmium only two types are there actually you think, but you please see there are so many sub types also along with it. You are having lead acid plant A, lead acid antimony, you are having lead acid calcium, you are having lead acid calcium maintenance free liquid electrolyte okay. for any of uh, the 
people who are using inverters or battery backups at home you want you you will understand maintenance free ok because these normally require maintenance in the form of topping up you will have to regularly fill in uh, the water which is uh, mineral not uh, drinking water not portable water some of the special water for inverters you have to keep topping up you have to keep doing it regularly as and when you use the inverter but these few types are maintenance free lead ash uh, calcium maintenance free liquid electrolyte is there then you are having maintenance free gelled electrolyte which is sealed it's maintenance free you just connect it and you leave it it works then you are having lead acid special alloy suspended electrolyte maintenance free and sealed please see the electrolytes are of different types liquid gel suspended and finally you are having the nickel cadmium which is pocket plate liquid electrolyte ok so these are the various types of batteries you can connect for your ups ok now battery type now i am showing you a um, ta tabular column which is giving me what the life expense expectancy will be because we have to use it continuously and with the power shortages uh, coming up uh, regularly during summer season we do require to have an inverter definitely or the ba backup so that is why life expectancy is one uh, very important uh, um, characteristic which we look at and whether there is some gas evolution which taking which is taking place and the approximate number of deep discharges means totally zero and totally charged deep means from zero to maximum charging that is what I am meaning. So, when I have a lead calcium it is 20 years life expectancy hydrogen gas evolution low to moderate, but it can have approximate number of deep discharges 100. Then lead calcium another type 12 to 15 years life expectancy hydrogen gas evolution is not there at all no problem and 200 lead antimony which is wet cell 15 years life expectancy high hydrogen gas evolution 400 deep discharges nickel cadmium not lead acid nickel cadmium 20 to 25 years low hydrogen gas evolution up to 1000 deep discharges so this is how depending on what type of battery what expectancy you can decide which battery backup you want for your ups system now there are different types of ratings also which uh, we should be aware of so battery manufacturers provide various types of information for sizing batteries and please see all battery sizing calculations have assumed a standard room temperature of 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees centigrade that is room temperature normally ok and generally this information will be supplied in one of these ways it can be kilowatts per cell or it can be kilowatts per bank or it can be ampere per cell normally which we have heard is ampere hour or we have heard kva all these ratings are there ok per cell rating also it may be or per bank means number of uh, batteries are connected series series parallel connection normally to increase the voltage ok so as the rating increases the number of cells or ba batteries are going to increase that is what is to be uh, understood here now please see one uh, sort of classification one sort of classification is like this I have low range uh, online UPS ratings of course, I have low range, I have mid range, I have high and I have extra high range. Please see it, it, it is ranging from a very low 200 VA volt ampere, please see volt ampere from volt amperes to very high kilo volt ampere you are having. So, low range is normal applications is in your IT applications 1 kVA to 6 kVA then you are having 2 kva to 7.5 kva you are having medical telecom industrial segments you can use it 
then you are having mid range you can have 5 kva to 10 15 to 30 three phase to single phase three phase to three phase you are having okay sometimes you may convert but normally used in three phase then you are having high ranges 35 to 60 kva three phase to single three phase to three phase and extra high range very huge applications you will come to know it, it is going to be used in um, entire uh, area itself can be uh, supplied with a uh, UPS. Okay. So, that is why extra high range also is available. Now, coming to this, now this is one thing which uh, students should understand. UPS will have both maximum wattage rating that is useful power, please see wattage means useful power and maximum VA rating, volt ampere rating. Watt is my useful power output? VA is not useful power, okay. it is apparent power. I think you know in the power triangle you are having useful apparent reactive. Reactive is KVAR which we uh, it is wasteful power. Watt is useful power and this is apparent power okay. and it is a standard in the industry that the watt rating is approximately 60 percent of the VA rating. So, please see whatever load I am going to connect to my UPS that rating is the useful power rating that is watt rating. So, that is but the rating which is given in the UPS normally is my VA rating especially in small UPS systems that is in our houses what all we use. Please see you have to take my useful power rating to be approximately 60 percent that of the VA rating. Okay. So, that is one thing which is you know that and common personal computer loads this is what is the actual uh, um, calculation which we have to do and decide what type of UPS what rating UPS we have to consider okay, for the load which we are going to connect. Then larger UPS systems this problem is uh, avoided because they have equal watt and VA ratings for the UPS and because of the fact that the watt and VA ratings of the loads which are connected are also equal. Large UPS systems huge KVA ratings of UPS systems. This is what is uh, the normal um, what you say standard which is used. So, on in the houses or in the IT sector where I am going to use UPS for smaller loads then I have to take into consideration that the useful watt, a, watt output is 60 percent the VA rating voltage ampere apparent power rating. Okay. So, I have given just a small what do you say um, comparison between the different types of UPS in this. Okay. Standby I have already told you line interactive there is there is a hybrid also variety standby and online hybrid is there. Then there is one special standby ferro then you are having double conversion all my online system is double conversion AC to DC, DC to AC again AC to DC that is why double conversion okay. and you are having for three phase you are having delta conversion online. Okay. So, practical power range in KVA it is increasing you could please see you could make out 0 to 0.5 small UPS low range UPS line interactive also low range and uh, st online and uh, standby hybrid is also low range then maybe here this is mid range you can consider and these two are high range and extra high range up to 5000 kva rating you could see conditioning of the voltage whether it, the voltage is conditioned conditions in the sense it is not only regulation it is where maintaining the value is one thing then whether uh, all the other unwanted noise voltages transient surges what all I have told whether it is conditioned or not that is what it means. Standby there is no almost voltage conditioning is not there we do not have circuitry for it 
line interactive again it is design independent whereas all the other four types are voltage conditioning is high okay circuitry involvement of that is in the terms of conditioning is also there then cost wise definitely standby is the least line interactive and uh, double online uh, systems uh, both the types are medium whereas this um, hybrid variety and ferro variety they are having high cost efficiency wise please see very high efficiency of standby and line interactive and maybe delta conversion is high whereas efficiency of the other types are low because there is power loss and whether the inverter is always operating or not standby definitely it is not operating line interactive is design dependent standby and online hybrid it is partial you know that standby no okay whereas this always inverter is operating yes is the answer so this is one comparison table which i would like to share with uh, all you students for all the various types of ups which is shown in this one slide which i wanted to clearly show so that you understand the purpose of a ups so purpose of the ups please see ups output over here i have shown a pure sinusoidal waveform and please see this is the input power utility power input and the I, uh, normally we term it as so purpose of ups is to maintain clean uninterrupted power during utility events power conditioning takes place isolation is there from other electrical loads and separately derived source of power it is and please see outages these terminologies is what i wanted to share with students you will be hearing about these uh, terminologies outages power outages taking place due to lightning strikes due to faulty switch gear due to storms due to high winds due to falling trees due to traffic accidents outages means almost power is off okay that is called as power outage then you can have a sag please see sag means the magnitude of the output voltage will decrease you could make out so it may be due to faulty switch gear it may be due to heavy loads or it may be due to poor distribution sag okay that's also a problem of the input during at the input then due to poor distribution you having a swell opposite of sag it should actually be to 30 volts but it will suddenly shoot up to 400 volts so it is a swell these are the terminologies which you have to use sag swell okay then spike suddenly there is a huge rise in the uh, value of the voltage okay and that is because of the switching operations or maybe poor filters maybe faulty loads okay or some interference also may cause this spike all these are unwanted unnecessary please see these are the things which are unwanted unnecessary then there may be distortion of course distortion in your waveform harmonics electronic loads and poor distribution and finally, there may be a frequency change, 50 hertz is what is there, but there may be a change in the frequency due to major utility problems. Okay. So, these are the things which are going to be conditioned at the UPS output power in spite of all these unwanted faults which are occurring at the input, all those are going to be rectified and they are going to be conditioned and I am going to have a clean uninterrupted power supply during the utility event. So, that is what is the UPS all about probable review questions which I have discussed so far you are having what is an M SMPS schematic and explain then you may have to compare then schematic of an SER battery charger and explain then what is standby what is online how do you determine battery size 
block diagram of UPS and applications. Okay. These are some things which I already have discussed in this class. So, dear students, hope and pray you are you have understood this uh, topic and interesting industrial applications of uh, the thyristors which we have discussed and you go and analyze this is the chapter 8 of this uh, syllabus. So, happy reading and keep smiling. Thank you.